In this second video, creating realistic scenery, we're making bushes and small trees. Hello and welcome to this second episode in the series about making realistic scenery. In the previous episode, we worked with the ground, the foundations, uh, establishing color tones, uh, setting a reference for whatever prototype you are working with on your diorama or model railroad. In this video, we're gonna work our way upwards from the <laughs> ground level, so to say. But in the end, we will also have a, a, a milestone announcement. Yes, <laughs> what's that about? Well, you'll see. But let's first kick off uh, the work with uh, the realistic scenery. In the first video of realistic scenery, we went through the basic of ground coloring and how to create a color reference which can be used throughout the build. And we went through basically three ground types. Dry ground, like here, this is around the Cisco line in the United States. And then Scandinavian style ground with the kind of dark green grass covered areas. And then South German with a very bright green grass type vegetation. Let's stay in this environment and take it to the next level, because in this video we will work with bushes mainly. There are tons of different products which can be used to create bushes, but uh, I have a few favorites and one of them is the foliage from uh, Woodland Scenic in different colors. This one's light green, which I think uh, matches this uh, South German module best. So this is what the product looks like. It's a kind of non-woven mesh or what you could call it. And then there are some, well, uh, turf, uh, coarse turf glued to it. And uh, the way you use this is you expand it in all direction like this. And then you add a pool of uh, glue onto the, the ground like this. It's preferred to have several of these bushes next to each other because that looks best. And then when you push them in place into the spot of glue, use a stick, either a barbecue stick or like here, I'm using the, the paint brush to do that. Otherwise the bushes end up all flat. So this is what this product looked like when applied uh, in the landscape. So the bags may look small, but uh, they last for uh, hundreds of bushes. Another very good and useful material I've been using throughout uh, both my layout and also where I've been working on layouts is this clump foliage. It's another type of foliage from Woodland Scenic. It's uh, less uh, transparent, it's more, uh, well, opaque. It's uh, It doesn't have the mesh, it has just uh, we'll say turf, coarse turf glued together in clumps. So, but uh, the application is basically the same. You push it in place on your layout in pools of glue. This material also comes in different colors. This is the conifer green, which is a very dark green here seen on another module. And then we have the light green. Here I've used it on my Scandinavian module. And uh, you see here it looks like uh, Uniper or something like that. Another very nice material to work with is this from uh, Mini Natur. It's a German manufacturer, uh, makes uh, high end uh, uh, landscape materials. And this uh, material is called ivy, because the original intention is probably to make ivies from it. But uh, I have not done all that much ivies, but I use these for bushes. And especially in dry landscapes, uh, process is the same as with the foliage. You just uh, expand it slightly and then put it in a pool of glue. And it looks like birch or... Uh, aspen trees, low aspen trees uh, like this and preferably put them in groups uh, like this. So, But as said, there are tons of different materials but these are the ones I've been working most with. 
Oh, if you're doing a massive installation and need tons of bushes and want to stay a bit on the budget, uh, it could be a good idea to make the bushes yourself. And then there is this material, uh, which is called polyfiber from Woodland Scenic. It is basically green colored filter wool uh, used for aquariums. And uh, yeah, so. You know, if you want to make a, a lot of these uh, bushes, then I suggest you use this fil filter wool instead because it's uh, like one fourth of the cost. Uh, now, none of these materials are in particularly expensive, but if you're using a lot, it still makes a difference. You can see here in the microscopic view that it's uh, the same type fibers. But the problem has been the coloring of, uh, of this uh, white filter wool. I have not been all that successful doing that. But then I got uh, advice from uh, my friend Dominic in Copenhagen, Denmark, how to do this. So what he does, he basically mix either a dark brown or like I do here, a black with... Uh, a thinner which is water and then white glue uh, elmer construction or ponal and then it takes um, so, a, a package for some food this is a milk package which has a plastic um, it's plastic coated on the inside uh, to keep the milk in place of course so you just cut a piece of that fold it in the middle like this and then it's uh, like this okay so then you just uh, put uh, your uh, bush or well a number of bushes in uh, in your color and then you just put it in between that and with this uh, rather simple device you can squeeze all of the paint out and still the the wool will keep its color and also expand when you, you know, unfold that uh, milk uh, package uh, wrap. And then it's just to uh, sprinkle some turf of your choice uh, into it. And uh, once ready, it will look like this. So if you choose a brighter uh, center color, you will of course have a brighter center core of these bushes. So you don't have to have black you can have like light brown brown or green and then a selection of different turf and the turf i'm using is fine turf from woodland scenic and now i am putting two chunks of this uh, bushes in place here an advantage with this process is that uh, it only takes a few minutes to create uh, a really huge amount of uh, bushes and also that you can uh, exactly select and choose the coloring uh, for your layout another cool material to work with making bushes and also low trees is hemp rope from hemp uh, this is also very low cost so the process is that you cut a piece of the rope like this and then you expand it in one end when you feel happy about the expansion and the height of the bush or small tree then you just take uh, uh, fast set glue and apply it all around like this and with that done you can cut away the bush you're working with now spray paint this uh, bush to uh, a coloring of your choice I choose the brown here and then after that we're gonna apply noch leaves to the uh, branches or twigs in this uh, bush the leaves sticks in the wet paint but if you like you can also apply uh, some uh, spray glue uh, into it and get a well better density of the foliage and it's uh, well applied in the landscape same manner as all the other bushes mainly in a pool of glue like this so i would say the main advantage with hemp is that it can be customized both to color and look and form which sets this uh, apart a bit from the others where you really cannot uh, create uh, branches which visible branches that are more like puff balls another uh, very nice material to work with is uh, sea foam the sea foam is available from most manufacturer noch has something they call naturbäume nature trees 
but it's all the same thing. Uh, basically, it's a plant. So what you do first is to remove the leaves, which are typically still there. So, and once you have removed the leaves, we need to spray paint this. And for this, I'm using an acrylic water-based paint in white color for most of the tree. This is to, well, duplicate kind of birch tree, aspen in the US, and then the, the twigs in black. Now we also need uh, some spray glue ahead of uh, applying the leaves, otherwise the leaves will stick very poorly to, to the twigs. So after two applications, the tree looks like this. Now we're not making a tree, we're making bushes, so I'm cutting off twigs from this um, main tree and uh, these are the ones I will apply in my landscape. So I make a hole using a screwdriver and then I stick the, the sea foam bush into that hole and fixing it with uh, some white glue. I would say that this type of bush is very suitable up front on the layout where you clearly can see the details but not on the edge of the layout because it's a bit fragile and uh, it breaks very easily so it should be uh, uh, only planted in protected areas. All right so <laughs> there you have it uh, the entire range of uh, everything from you know bushes from uh, a bag we buy by a vendor and uh, just glue in place wherever you like them uh, to as a mass production items where you can quickly make a huge amount of bushes for a larger installation to i would say highly customized bushes where you strictly want to a pursue a prototype type uh, vegetation and, and form the bushes to both shape and color. So I hope you have useful information uh, provided in this uh, second video about uh, uh, realistic scenery. Uh, but what about this uh, milestone announcement? Well, I can tell you now that uh, we have uh, 1000 plastic details in HO scale available for immediate uh, delivery via uh, download uh, to your 3D printer. And why do we work on this? <laughs> well, I've been building model railroads since I was 11 years old. And at that time in the 70s, there was a massive amount of dealers around and all the dealers have big stock and the items didn't cost all that much. So it was kind of easy thing to build them on the railroad. But today the assortment has shrunk and the amount of dealer, they have basically disappeared. Uh, you have to order everything online. And most of the new items, you have to pre-order them in January and then you get them in October. So. Me and uh, two other uh, designers uh, have set our mind to creating the world's largest database for 3D models for Model Railroad. And uh, now we've been working two years uh, along these uh, tracks. <laughs> and also now just got another guy on board, uh, which is now the fourth guy. And he's specialized in uh, vectorized graphics. So we will be able to provide, I would say, PDFs with um, uh, graphics to the 3D models. So this combined uh, makes it very easy for you. All you need to do this is you have to have a printer and you have to have a post cure and a, and a, a bottle of resin. That's it. Then you download, you purchase and you download the 3D models, put them into your 3D printer and the next day or a few hours later you have your item there. And all this happens at I would say from a 50 to 90 percent cost reduction and no transports uh, either. So it's directly from me to you, user for user. So uh, now we have the 
the last uh, set that was published was just two days ago and it was uh, low quadrant uh, semaphores for uh, US uh, type uh, model railroad prototypes. And it's animated uh, with uh, one or two servos so the wings are moving just like, like they should. And by doing this then we have only one segment left to fill and that is uh, city scene. So we have not yet designed anything for city scenes but it's coming up. We are currently at a, a design rate of four, 400 uh, 3D models per year. And we're also designing rolling stock. The target uh, for this year was to design 10 freight cars. And we're on our way. <laughs> Here you see the assortment of freight cars uh, so far. Uh, and there is more coming. Uh, and also now, since we have this new guy on board, we can provide uh, graphics for decals. So you get uh, the correct uh, marking on, on the... Uh, just by printing on a decal paper. So it's, uh, it's, it's all coming along very well. Uh, if you have not yet entered uh, <laughs> the world of 3D print, consider it. Because this, these uh, 500 euros you spend for the printer and the post curer, it will pay back you know, in less than a month. <laughs> in reduced cost. And also, you wastely uh, increase, uh, you know, the, what you have uh, possible to, to add to your layout and to, to build. So, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's a huge thing and I hope that I will be able to sit here next year and say that now we reach one and a half thousand uh, 3D models for HO scale. There are also two sets <laughs> for M scale and that is the catenary system for Germany and uh, Sweden. They are also available for N scale. And the uh, common question I get often is, uh, you know, is it possible to downscale uh, HO items to N scale? And I say no, it's not. Because um, we design the HO scale to the smallest possible dimension. So it, you know, does the job still without breaking, but it's not possible to downscale it because then it will not print or it will very, very easily break. So <laughs> just to, to answer a common question from viewers. So uh, I'm putting up a link to the main catalog where you can find uh, all these uh, 1000 different items for Model Railroad. Uh, so check it out. Uh, one good thing uh, is that you're also supporting the channel by buying the, the 3D models uh, from us. So <laughs> with that said, uh, I just want to say a big thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you also in the next one uh, where we will cover uh, trees and uh, other scenery details in this series about realistic scenery. Thank you very much for watching. See you there. <laughs>